The Sealed Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly, the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages and stops. Ah. The strange story of two people whose ambition led them to murder and to an amazing destiny. A tale titled Broadway, Here I Come. Here is the tale, Broadway, Here I Come, as it is written on the pages of the sealed book. The story begins in a tawdry cabaret in a little California town. At a small table is George Williams, a respected member of the community. Fat and bald, George sits patiently mopping the sweat from his brow and watching his young, vivacious wife, Kitty, dance with Eddie Davis, a rumor in the Williams home. As the scene opens, the dance comes to an end. Pretty smooth, Kitty. Pretty smooth. <laughs> you ain't so bad yourself, Eddie. I'll dance with worse. Eh? Who? Your husband? <laughs> look at him sitting along the table here. Hiya, Georgie. <laughs> you look kind of hot. Please, Kitty. Can't we go home? Oh, it ain't even midnight yet. Uh, we practically just got here. But, Kitty, you know what Dr. Smith said. With my bad heart, I need plenty of sleep. Oh, George, don't be a kill, Joy. But, Kitty, I... Kitty! He's playing blues in the night. Yeah, baby, yeah, that's our song. Come on, come on, we're just getting warmed yeah. up. We'll go home after this number, George. Order yourself another soda. But I don't want another kiss. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the first time we danced in this building? Oh, yeah. yeah. In the middle I spotted you, I knew you were the doll for me. Oh, Kitty, why don't you stop stalling me off? What are you going to give George the air? You see anything better than George around? Yeah, baby, me. You? <laughs> you haven't got a cent to your name. Well, maybe not, Kitty, but I'll get it. Don't make me laugh. Where? Here in Fairhope? Population 3,462. I don't mean in Fairhope, baby. I'm going places. Yeah. Where? New York, Broadway. That's where I'm headed for. I got plans, baby, big plans. Such as? Listen, Kitty, you've seen all the cups I want for dancing. You know I'm good, don't you? With a flashy partner and a fast routine, I'd be a natural for Broadway. And if you're smart, baby, you'll hook up with me. Well, I've got it pretty soft here, Eddie. All right, with George. Look, if you're figuring on his weak heart, you better forget about it. He's liable to live another 20 years, and then where are you going to be, huh? Old and fat. Yeah, but I'll have George's money to console me. Well, all right, then. You can stay with that fat slob. I'll look around someplace else for a partner. George, why aren't you dressed? It's after eight. Why, oh, Kitty, I called on Dr. Smith today. He told me that any exertion or excitement might be fatal. So I promised him I wouldn't go out at night anymore. And what am I supposed to do? Sit around and twiddle my thumbs? I'm young. I want to live. But, honey, you know I... Here comes Eddie downstairs. Maybe he'll go... Eddie! Eddie, can I see you for a minute? I don't want you asking him to take me. Oh, sure, George, sure. Sure, let me... Eddie, the doc thinks I ought to take it easy, so... 
I can't take Kitty out tonight. Ah, now that's tough, George. Look, Eddie, would you mind taking Kitty out dancing for me tonight? She's awfully anxious to go. Gosh, George, there's nothing in the world I'd rather do for you. But, uh, I got a date tonight. And, uh, this dame is really something special. Oh. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, it's all right, George. It's all right. Sorry I couldn't oblige. Good night. Good night, Eddie. Have a good time. Did you have to throw me at his head that way? Make me look like a fool? Oh, Kitty, don't be angry with me. I just... I'll show that, Eddie. He can't treat me like this. I'll show him. Eddie? Yeah? I want to talk to you. All right. Hi, Kitty. How's George? Oh, two weeks he's been in bed and the doc says he ain't no better. He's got to stay quiet. But I don't. I've been staying home with him every night for those two weeks and I'm sick of it. <laughs> Look, Eddie, how about taking me dancing tonight, huh? Oh, gee, Kitty, there's nothing I'd rather do, but like I said, I got a date tonight. You've been having a lot of dates lately, haven't you? Well, sure, but a guy like me has to get around when he's looking for a dancing partner. So you Still figuring on going to New York, huh? Yes, sir, baby. I ain't gonna be around this whistle stop much longer. It's Broadway, here I come. And in a couple of years, when I'm in the big time, you can remember me standing here telling you that. Oh, Eddie, it ain't that I don't want to go to New York with you, only... Only this is a big step you're asking me to take. Listen, baby, you know I'm nuts about you. You know I'd never do anything to hurt you. You know that, don't you? Come here, baby. Uh, uh, now, what do you say, baby? Are you going with me? This is your last chance. All right, Eddie, I'll go with you. Ah, good, honey, honey, I promise you'll never regret it. We can't miss. We're leaving this two-bit burg tonight, forever. Tonight? Yeah. Now you go pack your things, Kitty, while I go downtown. You got a few things to be taken care of. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Well, here I am, baby. Eddie, where were you so long? I've been packed and ready for hours. Yeah, I've been trying to collect some of that dough the cheap chiselers in this burgomi. No dice. All I was able to get was 50 bucks. So that kind of puts it up to you, baby. What do you mean by that? Well, if we ain't got any dough of our own, we'll have to take George's. Where's he keep it? But, Eddie, that's stealing. Oh, don't be a sap, will you? In California, half of what a guy has belongs to his wife, don't it? Okay, we'll just take your half, that's all. Eddie, you, you sure we won't get in trouble? Of course we won't. It's your dough, ain't it? Come on, where's George Keeble? Well, he's got a secret wall safe behind this radio. If you push the radio aside, you can see it. Well, so that's where he's been keeping his little nest egg, eh? Yeah. Let's just take a look at it. <coughs> yeah. Well, what do you know? Eddie, how are you going to open it? I don't know the combination. <laughs> Baby, this moth-eating safe ain't no problem. Just give me an hour to work on it, I'll have it open for you. <laughs> And now to continue the story, as it is written in the sealed book. After Eddie had tried for an hour to open the safe, where Kitty said George kept all his money, he was obliged to use force. Kitty found him a heavy hammer, and he went to work with that. Eddie, you're going to wait, George, if you don't cut it out. Uh, don't you worry, baby. Just a couple of more, and this thing will fall apart. Yeah, yeah, that did it. Oh, look, Eddie, there's a roll of bills in there. Yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. Just a minute, we'll find out how much your split of it comes to. Yeah. Let's see. Hey, look, there's a piece of paper wrapped around the roll with figures on it. Yeah? It says $14,600. $14,000? Yes, sir, baby, and half of that's yours. Seven Gs. Oh. Think what that don't mean to us when we hit the great white way. Kitty. George. George. Did I hear some pounding down here? It sounded as though I... Uh, uh, you broke into my safe. What are you doing with my money? Now, take it easy, George. We're only taking kitty share. You? You broke into my safe. Took my money. I'll... I'll call the police. You can't... You can't... Oh! Eddie's having a heart attack. Uh, oh, kitty, my medicine. It's... Yeah. No, on top of the radio. 
Get him! All right, George, just take it easy. You'll be all right as soon as you get some of your medicine. Mm. You mean that stuff will fix him up? Yeah, oh. it always does. Oh, kid. Kitty, hurry! All right, George, oh. wait till I pour a little into this glass. I got other ideas. Oh. Eddie, you knocked the bottle out of my hand. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think George will be a lot better off without his medicine. You... You want me to die so you can take my money? <laughs> You're catching on quick, Georgie, but a little too late. <laughs> it's blood money. Cursed. You'll find you won't go far with it. <laughs> Shut up, you little fool. You want to wake up the neighborhood? Is he dead? Yeah. Yeah, that makes everything perfect. Is this widow, the dough is all yours now. Eddie, the cops... What'll happen when they find him? Not a thing. It wasn't murder, was it? George just died of a heart attack as he was trying to take some of his medicine, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby, 14 G's. That'll take us a long way. Yeah. Well, I'll take care of it, Eddie. After all, it's, it's my dough now that George is dead. So you're going to take care yeah. of it. <laughs> you may as well learn now that I'm giving the orders, not you. You understand? Yeah. Yeah, Eddie, sure. Yeah. It's better. Okay, baby, let's get rolling. Come on. A lot of traveling to before we hit Broadway. How far have we come already, Eddie? Uh, about 400 miles, I guess. We're making good time. Gosh, Eddie, you've been driving all night. You look sleepy. Don't you think you ought to stop and rest a while? It's a sense of stop in the middle of the desert. We'll rest up when we're across it. Gosh, there isn't another car on the road. Yeah, there's a back road, baby. Little Eddie is playing it safe, see? You, you mean the cops might be looking for us? It well, could be. They don't worry me. They ain't got a thing on us. They're going to think it's awful queer when they find George dead and us gone. Uh, stop your worrying, I tell you. Once we get to New York, they'll never find us. Gee, New York, Broadway. You can hardly wait. Tell me about it, Eddie, huh? Well, oh, it's a great town, Kitty. I never saw anything like it. Yeah? Well, it's the hotels, theaters, nightclubs. Something happening all the time. Remember that movie we saw at the Bijou? Yeah. Showing Broadway all that up at night? Just think soon we'll be there ourselves. Oh, I gotta get some new clothes. Hey, hey, wake up, wake up! Eddie. Eddie, Eddie are you all right? Car's a complete wreck. Yeah. Well, mastermind, what now? We're stuck in the desert, hundreds of miles from anywhere. There's not a car in sight. Oh, you and your back roads where we could... Hey, Kitty, look over there. Where? I don't see anything. Look where I'm pointing, would you? Huh? Did you see there's a water tower about a mile away? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I see it now. Well, that water tower means there's a railroad over there. So what? So what? That means the train stopped there. We can rest in the shade of the water tower until a train comes along and stops for water. Then we can get on and keep going. Come on. Oh, gosh, Eddie. Oh, the sun sure is hot. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. Just keep walking, will you? Yeah. Soon be in the shade of the water tower. <laughs> oh, what's so funny? Oh, Eddie, look at us. You've got $14,000 in your pocket. We're trapping across the desert like a, like a couple of bucks. Very funny. <laughs> Eddie. Eddie, come to think of it. 
Remember what George said before he died? He said it was blood money and we wouldn't go far with it. Well, what's the matter with you? Is the sun beginning to get... Kitty. Kitty, hear that? It's a train. Yeah. And he looked, there it is. Yeah, yeah, it's coming plenty fast. What if it doesn't stop at the water tower? Look, it's going east, ain't it? After that long run across the desert, it's bound to stop here for water. Well, well, it's a freight train. Well, what'd you expect, the Broadway Limited? Well, but anyhow, we're going to ride Look, Kitty, Kitty, it's slowing down. Wait along the tracks here. Yeah, but Eddie, the water tower is a ways up the track. So what? That's where the engine will stop. Well, we're looking for an old boxcar, and this is the place to wait for it. Yeah, I never rode the freights before. I... It ain't exactly like a Pullman, but it'll get us across the desert, and that's what counts. Yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah. It's coming to a stop. Keep your eyes peeled for an open box car. Yeah. Maybe hey, there's one. Yeah, yeah. It's going to stop right in front of us. Yeah, what I tell you? Come on, come on. I'll help you okay, out. Okay, Eddie. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, 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 just a second. Uh, yeah, okay, we're all set. About ten minutes, this baby's going to start rolling. Then it'll be Broadway. Here we come. And now to continue the story as it is written in the sealed book. As the freight train which Eddie and Kitty have boarded speeds through the desert, the two partners in crime and tawdry ambition sleep. Presently Kitty wakes and looks out the open door. Then anxiously she shakes Eddie awake. Eddie. Huh? Huh? Why? Didn't you say Why? this freight was going east? Said we were headed for Broadway. That's east, ain't it? But this train is headed west. West? You're crazy. Look at the sun. We're heading straight toward the sunset. What? Hey. hey you're right. Yeah, but when we got on this freight, you said it was going east. And it was, I tell you. Then, then why is it going the other way now? Look, stop asking me dumb questions. Will you? How should I know? I guess after the freight left the water tower, it ran east for a few miles, then made a long swing around, started back at the coast. Yes, that's what must have happened. But why should it start back for the coast? Look, I ain't the conductor. I might not stop worrying, will you? Eddie will end up in some freight yard almost where we started from. So what? The minute this baby hits a town, you and me are getting off. Then we're going to take a train east, a real train. We got enough dough to travel in style, baby. He said it was blood money. That we wouldn't go far with it. Lay off that kind of talk, will you? This dough is taking us to Broadway and right up to the top of the heap. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, sure, Eddie. That's better. All we got to do is sit tight till the freight stops and grab a passenger train going east. All right, Eddie. Gee, it's getting kind of cold, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always gets cold in the desert when the sun goes down. This baby ought to be stopping sometime during the night. Best thing to do until then is try to get some sleep. <laughs> We've stopped. we stopped? Yeah. 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 so we have. Where are we? I, I don't know. I, I just woke up myself. Uh, it's still dark outside. You think we're still in the desert? I'll soon find out when I open this door. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Still night, all right. Pretty dark out. Say, what do you know? What, Eddie? This boxcar's on a siding all by itself. Oh, we're sleeping. They must unhook it. Pushed it on his side. And... You, you mean the rest of the train is gone? Yeah. Well, at least he didn't leave us in the desert. Parked on the siding is some small whistle stop. I can see trees and a couple of buildings. Eddie, that means in the morning we can get a train out of here and start east. Yeah, sure does, baby. Come on. Let's hop off this car. Yeah. It's pretty late, but maybe there's some place in that two-bed burg we can get a cup of coffee. Huh? Funny we haven't eaten for a long time, but I don't feel hungry. I ain't so hungry myself. We will be when they put some food down in front of us. Here, baby, I'll help you down. All right, Eddie. Yeah. Come on, baby, this way. Get. Come on, what do you stand there for? Eddie. Eddie, look. That building over there. Oh, what about it? it? It's George's lumber mill. Jo George's lumber mill? Eddie, don't you recognize it? Eddie, we're back in Fairhope. Fairhope? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You, you remember what George said before he died? He said it was blood money. We'd never go far with Shut it. Shut up. Well, he was right. 
It was right here where you are back in Fairhope. Oh, right back where we started from. Right back where we started from. Oh, I told you to shut up. Uh, maybe that'll bring you to your senses. Look, it's just a coincidence that we landed back in Fairhope. That's all. Eddie, what are we going to do? It's that simple. We're going back to the house and change our clothes. Then we'll be on our way again. Back to the house? Oh, no, no, no. What are you scared of, baby? You're stiff laying on the floor in the living room. George can't hurt you now. Come on. Eddie, I don't want to go back there. Don't be like that. We can't travel in these clothes. Change the house in ten minutes, then hit you right over to Rockford and catch your morning express east. Now, come on. Come on, come on, will you? Be dawn another hour. Hey, look, there's a wreath on the door. The funeral wreath. Yeah, means he must have found George. Oh, Eddie, let's not go in. Don't be a sap. There's nothing to be afraid of. Where's my key? Yeah, here he is. Eddie, I'm scared. Yeah, you make me sick. Uh, hey, come on in. Come on in. Nothing's gonna hurt All you, right. I tell you. Put on a light. I never saw such a dame. Eddie, it smells like flowers in here. Yeah, yeah, they tell me someone died here recently. Kitty? <gasps> Kitty, is that you? No. No, it can't be. You're dead. Don't be a dope, Kitty. You be talking to us if he's dead. So, uh... That heart attack didn't knock you off, huh, George? I shouldn't talk to you, Eddie, after what you did. Oh, now, come on. <laughs> it was an accident, my breaking a bottle of medicine, George. In fact, I shouldn't speak to either of you. After the way you murdered me. <gasps> after we what? Eddie. Eddie, the funeral wreath. A fine thing. My own wife and my best friend murdering me. The wreath. Eddie, he's dead. Now. No, no, it can't be. Oh, but I am dead. Maybe you'd like to see me laid out of my coffin. My body's in the living room. I have a beautiful coffin. It is. It is. No, no. I don't believe it. If you come this way, I'll show you. They really fixed me up fine. I look 20 years younger. Now, wait till I open the door. Here we are. I'm afraid you won't be able to see me too well. These three candles don't give much light. Eddie, there's three coffins in this room. Yeah. Yeah, three coffins. Oh. Didn't you know? No. No what? Those other two coffins are yours. When your car overturned yesterday out in the desert, you two were killed. And that is the tale of two people and an ambition which would not stop at murder. And the strange fate to which that ambition brought them. As the facts are written here in the sealed book. Mysterious are the workings of fate in the lives of mere mortals. And now, keeper of the book, before you close the great volume, show us the tale we tell next time. This one. Yes, an amazing tale of a woman who came from the heart of mysterious Egypt and brought death to those who loved her. A woman whose soul was the soul of a cat. A tale titled, The Queen of the Cats. Be sure to be with us again next time when the sound of the great gong heralds another strange and mystifying tale from The Sealed Book. The Sealed Book, written by Bob Arthur and David Cogan, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor.